Well, I am still running gravel across the grease table. It's a slow process because I just make a slow trickle. I don't want to dump a whole bunch in there at a time and have a diamond ride on top of some gravel and not come in contact with the grease. Because then the grease can't grab it if the diamond doesn't touch it. But uh, I'm, I'm feeding it slow. I stopped and had breakfast and uh, we lost our cool morning in Arkansas in August. Cool weather doesn't last long. So I closed the door to this metal building and turned the air conditioner on. It's insulated in here. and uh, So now I'm just running the grease down and finishing my coffee. I wanted to show you the vibrator. Uh, one thing grease tables have a vibrating motor on it and the only reason I can think of they want to be sure to shake it to keep the gravel moving but they also want to be sure the diamond drops to the bottom because diamonds are heavier than the other minerals even though this is all uh, centers and most of it is dense material. So they want to shake it to where the diamonds will drop to the bottom and come in contact with the grease. So the vibrating motor keeps the gravel moving and makes sure the diamond drops to the bottom and comes in contact with the grease. I have run this grease table without a vibrating motor and it caught diamonds. I've caught several diamonds with this grease table. Uh, all of them are small. It would catch big diamonds, but I don't need to run big gravel down this. I can see big diamonds. I mainly saved the grease table for my real fine material because I don't want to look through all of it, you know, all the real little stuff. And so let me let me feed just another second here and then I'll uh, grab the camera and show you the vibrating motor. Now originally it had some three phase motors on this because it came from South Africa. Well I don't have three phase electricity here. So I, I devised <coughs> a vibrating motor I thought would work. I took like a bench grinder and I took a hammer and chisel and I broke part of the grinding wheel off so that as it spun, it would shake like this. Well, it worked. It shook. But the motor wasn't designed to be off-center, eccentric like that. And I eventually messed up the motor and had to throw it all in the trash. But um, my dad, he's passed away now. And when he died and I cleaned out his house, I found a little device he had bought at Sears to vibrate, I guess if he had a sore knee or sore back, he could put this on there and it would vibrate. So I held on to it thinking, oh, I might be able to use that. So I uh, brought, I just did the easy thing and I zip tied it on the bottom here. So that's a little vibrating motor. It's just shaking and it's shaking the grease table ever so slightly and hopefully just enough that we can catch diamonds with it so uh, this is how it works it recycles the water with this pump the gravel drops down in there and that garden hose pump is sitting up on top of a concrete block so it doesn't get gravel in it and it just recycles the water back up into here and if I'll move my coffee cup you can see it just fills this vat and as the vat overflows it comes down here. Now I don't have grease on here. That's where I drop my diamonds on it. And then it falls onto one, two, three grease level slope plane. Um, this equipment came from South Africa and they had all kinds of information about the rotation of the vibrating motors. One's to rotate one direction and one the other direction. And they've got all uh, this information on the slope and all so it's all oh, important 
motors must run in opposite direction to each other. Well, I only have one vibrating motor and like I say, it works even without a vibrating motor, so I'm not too worried about it. But I guess the experts who tweak this to, to perfection, that's the way they do it. But in a little bit, when I get done running the rest of the gravel over the grease table, I'll scrape the grease off and boil it in water and separate the grease, water, and diamonds. 